If you still don't know about us, please visit our website. Uh, we have added your email to our newsletter uh, list so that when you're registered to this event, you're now going to receive news about our programming, uh, which is very diverse and rich uh, once a month. And I think you'll really enjoy that. So thank you, um, Angela, as well, for sharing our website. Uh, today's format is going to be very simple, uh, very flowy, very natural. Uh, I'm going to make a quick introduction to our uh, guest of honor, Manuel Piña, and then hand over the floor to him. He's going to take us into a journey of questioning the role of what an artist is, and what it means to be an artist today in this uh, globalized and digitally interconnect, uh, interconnected world, but yet disparate uh, world that we live in. As you listen to this event, and if you have any questions, uh, you are welcome to share your questions in the chat directly. And I will make sure to moderate your questions towards the end of the call so we can engage uh, in a conversation together. Um, we, as you know, we are recording this call and this is for the purposes of our archives and you will be able to access this and share with your friends on our YouTube channel. We're also, as you've heard, live streaming uh, to our Facebook page. So welcome everyone um, on Facebook. And if you uh, are feeling camera shy, just feel free to keep your camera off. We also want to acknowledge the support of the city of Vancouver, the government of British Columbia, and the federal government for their support of our programs. Um, and also just, I wanna share how thrilled I am to be here today. It's an event that I have been anticipating since the beginning of our um, visual arts program last year. I met Manuel when I was uh, an art history student in UBC back in 2010. I remember how his studio was always open for artists and students to engage in conversations about life, arts, and questioning the role of art in life. Talking to Manuel leaves me in thoughtful silence at times, but it also makes me feel very excited and motivated to, you know, to just think and challenge the status quo and rethink about the structures that we have built as a society. And I want to share that feeling of, uh, you know, of questioning, of being motivated with you, which is why I invited Manuel to join us today. It is my pleasure to introduce Manuel to you. Thank you, Manuel. Um, just a little quick recap about him. Uh, he was born in La Havana, Cuba in 1958. He graduated as a mechanical engineer in Russia in 1983, and he began showing his art in 1992. He has been a professor at the University of British Columbia's Department of Art History, Visual Art and Theory since 2004. He lives and works in Vancouver. He is what we would consider an artist, a pedagogue, uh, um, and social and spiritual activist. Record. His work explores digital imaging, uh, imaging technologies and transmedia languages to investigate their role in the creation of our present. Manuel is also co-founder of the New Tribes School, an online and land-based global network of healers, teachers, and cultural and software activists who are working towards the preservation and dissemination of ancestral wisdom and languages around the globe. Manuel's artwork has been exhibited in the Americas, in Europe, including the Havana Biennale, the Istanbul Biennale, the Kunsthalle Vienna, Gray Gallery, and Dorsky Gallery in New York, the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, and the Darius Museum in Zurich. I will encourage all of you to follow his work uh, on his YouTube channel. We are going to share the link on the chat as well. Manuel, thank you so much for being here. Um, really thrilled to have you here and, and share uh, you with the rest of us. Um, I'm just going to really hand the floor to you and, and let you share some thoughts uh, on your experiences living in Canada and how that has changed your vision as an artist, an educator, and a cultural activist. Welcome, Manuel. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mirette. I'm forgetting how we met. Uh, uh, yeah, and we didn't, you're right. We didn't have much time to talk that time. Um, uh, actually, what, what happened with that? You were working on the documentary, right? What happened with that? Yes, uh, back when I was a student, I was experimenting with uh, many things, uh, pop-up exhibitions, blogs. Um, I think all of that helped me now to, to do this and to, to share these conversations with other people. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I could go uh, about this in so many ways. So 
but I would like to to know, for instance, what I mean, who are we, right? Like, who is an artist in the group, uh, and that somehow would help me orient the way I I, I talk. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how to do this, but how many artists are out there in the group, or? Well, I'm an artist, I'm a writer, and a storyteller. Okay. 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 Yeah, me too. <laughs> Hi, Manuel. Uh, uh, Nicola here in Dublin. Hi, how are you? Uh, I'm a writer and an artist. Okay, thank you. And I think that the rest of us um, just really enjoy um, figuring uh, life out through art. I see Triana, you have your hand up. If you would like to unmute yourself, you're welcome to another artist. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so, right, so I get it now. Um, the, feel free to stop me uh, at any point, uh, Mire, because as you know, I, I teach, as you were saying, I teach at UBC. So my, my, my classes are always three hours. So I always have a hard time talking less than an hour. I'm just warming up normally by the end of the first hour. So. I, I don't have that gift of being concise. So I'm just going to start talking and, and, and we'll see where it takes, takes us. Um, the first, um, I should probably start by, because Mira is asking me, how has my, my vision and, and of, of, uh, has changed through, uh, from, from being here, from living from my life in Canada? Um, uh, but I should probably say, start by saying how, how I thought about art before I came to Canada. Um, I just sat open here at the window. Let me see where I was. All right, here. Um, let me try to share this screen now. Oh. Mire, can you allow me to share this second screen? Uh, yes, of course. So I will please ask um, our hosts, Lily or Angela, to give you permission on your second screen. They are, they're here in the background working on that. And uh, Manuel also, just to- I think, I think you're a co-host. I think you yeah. might be able to do it. Uh, if not, I could just like make you host. Uh, Angela, uh, uh, Manuel has two screens on the, so he's a participant twice. So make sure to make oh. them both co-hosts. Oh yeah, I just found the other one. So. I also see Manuel here that we have um, aspiring uh, writers and artists, designers, um, people that really appreciate art, storytellers, actors. So a nice a diversity here. Now, Lily, I think you should do it because yeah. it's not letting me add one more co-host. Oh, I see. Because uh, we are three already, so. Yeah, maybe exchange. He doesn't have to, to be co-host in both uh, profiles. Yeah. Remove maybe. one and put on the other. Yeah. Just, yeah. You uh, no, I cannot do it, Lily. Sorry, you can't. Well, that's no. okay. Yeah, you got I, it. Right. 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 <laughs> right from my phone, that's it. Um, let me see. Um, I just wanted to start with this image. Um, uh, can you see it there? No, okay, let me see. Not yet, okay. I think it's kind of, oh no, that's you. Share screen, start now. Yeah, yeah you can now see your screen. There, right? Mm -hmm. Great. So, turn this on. Anyway, so we'll just do this. Um, 
this is an image that um, is very important to me in so many ways. Um, it's an image that I took very early. Uh, when I, I didn't go to art school. Uh, as uh, Mire was saying, I, I was uh, where I am, or I was an engineer uh, by training. Um, but, I, but I was always interested in art and somehow I had the feeling that photography would be a way to get away with it since I didn't know how to paint or draw. Um, so eventually at some point I started interested, being interested in photography and, and this camera came to my hands and I started to learn how to use that camera, which was very different from anything I knew before. And um, so of course the best way to learn something is to try it out. So I was walking around with my camera and this, this is, uh, I'm walking around one of the most popular sites in, in Havana, which is called the Malecon, which is simply a, a wall surrounding the downtown part of the city and it divides the, the city from the water. And it's a very interesting situation because Havana is somehow guarded from the sea by that wall. Um, that is a, 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 a distance or, or a very physical limit that that wall makes to, uh, represents the city. Uh, but of course, it's a balcony into the ocean. So you're sitting there, you're looking north, you're looking out there to the rest of the world. Cuba being an island, you have the sense always of being, it's a very stark sense that you are isolated. Well, there are many reasons for that. Uh, and so sitting in the Malecon, in that wall is really uh, um, a place, particular, in particular times of history, right? When crisis uh, or something uh, somehow brings us to think about out there, right? There is the, there is Cuba and there is the world. That's the feeling that you are that you have when you are in Cuba. So I was just basically walking around this wall, and, and there was this kid jumping into the water, and I said, "Well." And I took your photo, take your photo, which I did. And, uh, and this is a photo. And that photo became quite important to me. Uh, it became very, very uh, visible, um, somehow paradigmatic of a particular moment of crisis, of migrations, of, uh, of a, it somehow was seen to, to um, to crystallize a particular historical, cultural, and spiritual moment in Cuba. It was a moment of crisis, of desperation, in which you, it felt like the only way around would be to escape from there, right? Um, and that, to a large degree, I'm talking here to you here right now, I'm sitting where I am, because of the photo, it, it really became so famous, right? To me, many, many places. Um, but I'm starting this story because the way I made that photo, and I just told you, right, it's just very much a coincidence, right? It was such a banality, right? Just walking around and taking a photo of a kid bathing in the water, in the ocean, right? Um, but it, it was the context and the, and, the, and, the, and the moment, the cultural moment, the cultural moment around the world in the art world that made this photo stand out and become something that changed my life and changed, in fact, probably some people's life, right? Uh, it's a photo uh, that many people are reading about, uh, crazy things that I never thought of uh, when I was taking the photo, right? So, um, and I'm telling this story because as I said, it was at the very beginning of my career, right? And at some point I started to, to think, well, what's going on with this photo? I, I mean, how, can, how much can I claim this to be my photo? Uh, and what is the, 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 what is it, an artwork, right? What, what's about it that it seems to do things in the world that you're not, you cannot claim responsibility for, and you cannot, uh, being honest, honest to yourself, you cannot really, uh, you have to admit that there is so much more to that going on, right? Uh, so that question of what is it to mean to be an artist and what is the role of an artist, something that, comes, has been very present to me in so many ways for such a long time. 
and and just because to a large degree because of this you know um, event that just happened in this day me walking around the city you know? so I just want I just want to start there because it's, it's um, there are not many artists in the in the in the in the group uh, but also those who are not which is apparently the majority of this group were not artists right and I really honestly I really admire art lovers <laughs> that is the possibility that you have and I also want to demystify that I'm sorry sorry Anna, could you please turn off your microphone the nice or can I co-host mute the nice please Thank you. Sorry, Manuel, it's just some background noise. Yeah. Um, but this is, um, this is really interesting. Thank you for sharing that. I actually did not know that uh, about your path uh, as an artist. And I think that's really beautiful how some moments in life um, can deter not determine, but really kind of veer you towards a certain path. And that's, um, thank you for sharing, for sharing yeah. that. And uh, cool. so what happened after that? Um, well, how about I said that? Uh, you know, I became an artist, right? I continued to, um, I, I was ever more passionate and interested in art. I learned art to, first in libraries. There, there is no art school for photography in Cuba, even to this day. Although it wouldn't make much sense now to have a photography school. Uh, so photography is, is, is not really taught in Cuba much. Anyway, so I learned that and and largely again due to this image and, and that of course became a series and you can see some here uh, also in the screen and this one too and this one they are all part of that series around you see, you can see the world better here the malecon um so i i came to vancouver and i came to vancouver no, i was invited to do a, a residency an artist residency uh, back in 1997, I think, 90, uh, 1996, I came to Vancouver and did a residency. And, and it was, um, of course, a life-changing experience because I learned so much here about art and about, at this point, at that point, Vancouver was pretty much the center of contemporary photography in the world. Some of the most important artists in the world lived here. They still live here. And there are still some of the most important artists in the world. So being exposed to this guy who actually received me with such generosity was such an, I became an artist here in a way, you know, or to know what I was trying to do. That's what I learned here in those four months that I was here as a, in a residency. And then I went back to Cuba and continued my work and, whatever, and eventually I um, ended up coming back here, invited to be, not invited, well, but I got a job here, basically, teaching at the university. I, so I, I took the opportunity because Vancouver was always, of course, a place I wanted to return to and be part of, in a way, as gratitude and because whatever. So I took that job and I came here. Um, uh, and of course, coming to, let me see what is my YouTube thing. Oh, I can share my YouTube from, oh, I can. You're already a co-host in both uh, of your, if you prefer to share with the other screen. Well, I can, I can do this one. Um, so I came, to, I came to teach here at UC and, um, and again, that question was very present, right? What is the role of an artist? Or, or even in, in a more uh, basic sense, right? What am I doing here? You know, I came from such a different place, sort of different cultural and political context, different histories. Um, furthermore, I didn't know how to teach art because I never went to art school. So I really didn't know what I was doing here when I started teaching. Uh, so I had to learn that. Um, and that question was very important always. What is it art? I had to figure that out because I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know what it was, let alone 
how to talk about it. Um, so teaching was for me uh, a very fruitful, uh, also learning process. And, and that has informed my teaching or my understanding of what teaching is. So for me, teaching is always about learning. Um, and as I have continued to develop my, myself, I guess, uh, as an artist, uh, teacher, they cannot be separated. Um, I am the artist that I am, or I'm interested in the things that I am as an artist because of the conversations and the, because of my teaching. Uh, uh, so I'm very grateful to my students uh, for their challenges and for all of the things that they have brought to me. Um, so. And so water, um, water, water and barriers have been part of your work. You have also kind of maybe you sort of veered from photography to video. Um, and I, I, so you're showing on your screen now Fragios and um, that I love this piece that you're about to show. Yeah. Um, I, I could start anyway. So uh, here I'm just um, trying to create a bridge with the previous work, right? My work of course is not just about the ocean although the ocean has such an important presence. Um, I keep going back to it. And uh, um, so this is one example, but here I was thinking, okay, this is what I was thinking. Um, what happens when you are in, in teaching, right? And, and the, the general, dominant culture in academia is that theory, theory uh, has a very important role, a very important place in art making, right? So students uh, are told that, and, um, and that of course is true. Art is, is not only uh, closely related to, to theory. I think art is a, is a form of philosophy. It's a form of knowledge uh, that can play such an important role in, in, in culture in the world. Um, but I, I, one of the things that I feel we missed in academia is to acknowledge uh, the role of, uh, of intuition, of serendipity, of, uh, of chance, of being attuned to something else, right? Um, so this work was an exercise in that. Um, so it's about for me to, to consciously come to a different way of making work, which is more intuitive and less uh, predetermined. Um, and at the same time, I was interested in, in the power of art to, of images to actually affect you, regardless any discourse, regardless any histories or stories or philosophies or lines of thought. What happens when you confront the artwork, the artwork or an image in itself? What is the power that image can, images can have? Um, um, so this is a, an, 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 an attempt to think in, in, the, in those lines. So you are seeing it down in your computer in a very reduced version, uh, but ideally these images are what would be um, projected very, very large. And the experience of course is quite different. Um, um, yeah, I was interested in images that are not narrative, but, uh, and, and to, at the same time, I was trying to create a different a kind of narrative just based on, 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 on a sequence of, of feelings that these images, images could bring into the viewers, right? You feel now with this image something, and then the next one will try to make you feel slightly different. And so it's basically a very big experiment. 
Um, but again, it's also a work that I like very much. Um, I really appreciate this work uh, after for whoever's in this call if you these videos are on um, Manuel's YouTube channel and the video progressively gets uh, more geometric there's uh, reflections uh, symmetry and it's just it's really um, worth watching but I do agree that it's very different experience to see it in person um, than online but it's still it's still a treat mm -hmm. Let me see if I can find now uh, another video. So yeah, I invite everybody to to, to go to my YouTube channel, but it's, it's a big, big mess uh, because it's mostly a... Um, like a drawer of ideas and things. Some of them are more successful than others. Always are uh, very much failures or don't do anything. Um, but anyway, so if you wanna go and check it out. Uh, so this is, um, let me see. This is one of your most uh, recent works. I don't know if you can, can you hear the sound, the, the audio of the video? I don't think so. Okay. Unless there's some beeping, beeping noises at times. What happened here? I don't know. Oh, something happened. Okay. Um, I don't know if you had the chance to, because I might not be able to find it now, to see the the video that uh, the, so you shared that video uh, that I sent you, that I said it was a poem. Let me see if I can find it here. Would you like me to share that? If you can, you, if you have it at hand, that would be great, yes. Because I okay. cannot find let it. Me, let me try. I don't know if I am host or not. Oh, yeah, yeah, found, found it now. Yeah, yeah. You have it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. So here it is. Yeah, so we can see it. Okay. And so even though we can't uh, hear the audio, I can maybe try to attempt to describe what the original audio is like. Uh, we can hear okay. at times some high notes, uh, but there's usually, it's very, very synthetic, very digital. Um, I think at times there's transit audio in the back. Yeah. Well, anyway. anyway, so, that video, uh, I'm just gonna read it here. Um, what happened with this video is that, um, again, thinking about that question of uh, of the role of the artist, right? And that uh, assumption that the artist is somehow uh, reflects his own inner world, stuff like that, uh, which is a, um, something that I always question with my students, right? You know that it's not this or it's not that. It's just there's so much more to art. And there is some, some much more mystery to what being an artist is the process of and for the creative process that I always try to challenge that in my students, right? That idea that you have this rich inner world that you want to share with the world, and that's the role of the artist. That's just one thing that we can do, but we can do so many things and they cannot be separated. So this video is is kind of uh, mocking at that because it's a video, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a poem, it's a visual poem. Um, and it's around contemporary culture, uh, but what I did is it's completely impersonal. Even though the text seemed to talk about me, I don't really know what the text actually says because I don't really know this phrase 
this is uh, obviously this very young people's land that I'm not familiar with. So what I did, I went online and I, and I found a list of the most common uh, words or phrases uh, in 2019, I don't know, whatever the year was that I made this piece. So I took, I compiled those phrases, I made a poem out of them, right? Uh, so even though it seems to be a poem about me and, and how cool I am, actually it, it's actually a reflection of a moment, a cultural moment in which the most common phrases is all about me and how cool I am, right? So, so and that's why I ask uh, Mireille to, to share that video because is that duality is that, is it about me? It's not about me, it's about a collective me, but it seems to be about me and how much of me is that in that, uh, or it reflects, so that. So that's another way of asking that question of uh, what is the role of an artist? Uh, in a playful way, mocking, uh, uh, again, that, um, uh, how can I say that, uh, generally, dominant narratives uh, that um, that the artist is uh, this gifted, I don't know, something that speaks for everybody in society. Um, I don't know, Mire, do you have any questions? Or shall I talk about school? Yeah, or what? Exactly. I, I mean, I do have, I do want to comment that we have shared the link to this video call wrap on the chat. Oh, yeah. uh, um, and we're also going to be, Angela is going to be sharing your uh, general YouTube channel link. Uh, and also, I want to agree uh, on that, Manuel, that kind of feeling when, when you first showed me this work, I was a little bit like taken aback. I didn't understand what was happening. And then I started recognizing maybe some abbreviations that, you know, you see here and there on, on I don't know, Instagram or other uh, digital spaces. And I felt completely out of the loop. I felt old. <laughs> I was like, what is happening? And it really invited me to reflect on, uh, yeah, situation as a person in general, right? Like, I don't know what's happening. Everything's moving so fast. There's this other uh, world that's uh, digital, that people are connected online. I mean, if you look at us today, we are having these sort of conversations online. Your phone is on vertical, you know, we're looking at your vertical format. Um, and, and I feel like these are also questions that, you know, that you experience uh, clearly, as you just stated, um, but also how to connect with people, right? And so I actually wanted to, to ask about, you know, this project that you talked about maybe like two years ago or a year and a half ago um, on how to connect healers and and kind of blend that with the with the role of an artist, right? So your your new tribes uh, school. Can you, can you tell us how that came about? What is what is the, the mission uh, of new tribes? Um, well, new tribes is again another um, response to 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 that question: to what is the role of the artist, but. Um, but of course, there is a different commitment here. This is a, a very serious attempt to to uh, to find a new place for artists in society, and and this is certainly a response to to a, to our the moment that we're living through. Right? Um, it is clear that the world has changed or continues to change in in the very a dramatic way, uh, and as as we change, and everything around us, um, uh, again, and this is nothing new. There are many in the past, right? It's been artists always question what well, their role and, and what is it that they continue to bring, or what? Is, yeah, what is their place in in, in that moment? Um, so for many experiences that it would be too long to describe here, I, I, I became more and more engaged in, in, in spiritualities, in, in, in other knowledges that are barren 
largely barring from academia, um, but in which, as I learned more and more and, 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 and got more immersed in, I realized that there are some important um, questions that are answered there. And there's many, many rich possibilities that are uh, very often uh, covered or, or go unnoticed for us simply because there is that dominant uh, vision of the world that academia imposes and, to, uh, and, and that uh, somehow uh, triggers down, trickles down to all of society. There is a, uh, there is a dominant narrative, a dominant worldview that is um, created, uh, reinforced, guarded and disseminated in academia, right? And, and, and I, wanna, I don't want to talk about the of academia. Uh, we know it's being contested, largely contested at this point in history as everything else. And um, from those concerns, from those experience, I started to think away, oh, what would be the best I could do in this moment? And, um, and I, as I met these people around me, and, and, and I found there is that wisdom that uh, that is that is there, waiting to be uh, re-embraced. And 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 increasingly, I see that there is a, a, a total communion between that role and what artists were sometime in history in the past, right? This notion of the artist as this uh, romantic hero is, um, is something, like something actually quite recent in history. Artists uh, before modernity, artists were pretty much uh, anonymous. They saw themselves as you know, uh, instruments of God to bring this thing, this gift. They were given this gift and their role was to bring that out, right? Uh, to communities and to heal and, and healers in, in traditional communities are, or, also the artists, right? So how do we find a new place for ourselves in this, in this society or than selling my work to the best bidder, right? And, and there is, um, I, again, I, the, another way in which, or, or another um, element that really made me question my role as an artist were very bitter experiences with collectors. Uh, not bitter in the sense that difficult uh, relationship with them. The, the challenge with dealers is that, or collectors is that there are these really magnificent, magnificent, generous people who support your work, who treat you as, as a genius, who give you everything they can, but then you find out that these people are not doing the best things in the world out there, right? So you find yourself in this difficult moment. So. That's another reason why I question that has made me question the, the role of the artist. Anyway, so going back to this, do we find another place for artists outside of the art world, which is so poison, or to me, in my experience, and it's already very personal. And what can do art to, to contribute to, to move on from the moment of the Stagnation. And this where this idea of the school came about. I started dreaming about what would be a school in which heal, healing and art would be one thing. Uh, also, I have a very particular vision about technology, uh, which for me, uh, my vision is that the world, everything is technology. And this is an old conversation, so I can, I'm not going to go into that. But for me, technology and spirituality are one thing. Uh, so again, I started to dream about, about a school in which, or about a community in which school, it, art and healing and, and technology would come to it in certain ways. And at some point through those conversations, I met people that eventually invited me to organize a, a, a program. And right now I am in this process of creating this program here. Uh, Right, it's called Indigenous Health Support Worker Diploma. 
So it's a diploma program for uh, health worker, uh, uh, people who will be working in communities, in indigenous communities. Uh, it's a program that has been taught for many years in this uh, college in Alberta, Yellow Hay Tribal College. So they offered that we open uh, a satellite program here in BC. And this is what we're doing. We're creating this program. We're set to start in December. Um, our classes and around this program, we're creating what okay, uh, I call, I've called the new type schools, right? So we have a program that's like a formal curriculum with courses, with grades and everything. And once you finish, you get a diploma and you can go as, to work as a healer or as a, as a social, as a health worker in communities. But around that, I have invited uh, other uh, teachers and, 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 and people that I've met along my path. And this, some of them, this website is more than anything. It's just a, 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 um, a, a small sample of what the school uh, can be, right? So we have a few elders. One of them is this person, David Daniel Hanius. Sorry. Right. Uh, uh, David Daniel, he's a, for instance, he's a, a knowledge keeper. He speaks um, seven or eight languages, Northwest Coast languages. He's the last holder of two of them, right? So there is an urgency to spread his knowledge. Uh, if you go to the website, there is an interview. Where Interview with him talking about, uh, you cannot hear it, but he's talking about his experience of the languages and how, um, I mean, the language of how that knowledge and not knowledge to be, right? Uh, so he's one of our teachers, or, um, or this person, Flavio Santi, uh, a shaman. Uh, healer from Ecuador, um, who I went with a group of friends to visit and he has a school, it's called the school, the Wayusa school. Um, so here are some, if you go to the website, there are some videos of our experiences there. In the Amazon, and, you know, the medicines that we that he share with they share with us and so that's another one of our teachers. Um, uh, I just want to um, say, Manuel, that I am really happy to see this project uh, come to life and how you've um, really made this link between the people that hold so much knowledge. And mm -hmm. So great to see this. Uh, I will share the the link to the um, to this site with everyone here on the chat in a minute. Uh huh. And, um, and now just being uh, a little Michael. bit. Yeah. My friend, I first of all thank you so much for all of that, and I would love to give um, some space to whoever else is here. We do have a question from um, Herbert. Herbert, I, um, I can read out the question for you. You're also welcome to unmute yourself however you feel uh, more comfortable. Um, but his question is, um, is the artist born or made? Does the artist make politics or is politics part of art? And so- oh, Wait, 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 I have to read that. One second, let me check okay, it out. No problem, it's in the chat. I'll read it again. His question is, is the artist born or is he made, right? So I see. does the artist, so really two questions, does the artist make politics or is politics part of art? So, I mean, of course, I think maybe here you can offer your, your point of view, but uh, perhaps this is a sort of question um, that has multiple answers, but what is your opinion uh, on this, Manuel? Do you think artists are born or are you born an artist? Or do you think you grow into being and develop into being an artist? 
<laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I thought about it so much. I, in my, of course, I teach, right? And uh, I encounter students who don't have that sensibility. But I wonder if, um, if that is because that sensibility has been taken away from them, you know? Part of why I'm so uh, reluctant or so uh, skeptical about academia is because I see the effects of education. And there is an increase in discourse about the harm of education as we know it, right? The educational system. So I don't know, maybe I, I don't have the answer. Yeah, I don't know if we were born or I've had beautiful experience with students, uh, right? Um, but I don't know if those who I felt they cannot be an artist just simply because they have been robbed or, or that sensibility has been killed in them. I don't know. I don't have an answer. I don't know. And about politics. Um, I don't believe art makes, well, it depends what you mean by politics, but politics is understood in the most uh, direct sense as talking about politi politics of the time or political relations or, uh, uh, there is so much more to art. And that's what I was trying to, to explain, for instance, with those videos, right? Is it political to make somebody feel something outside of themselves? Right, that can we can art do that? If art does that, is that politics or what is it? Is it important? Uh, what is the best art can do? That is the question. You know, is politics? There is so much more to that. So, yeah. politics or not, I don't think it's the most important question that we can ask from art. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Thank you, Manuel. I really appreciate okay. that. Um, I would also love to give this space to anyone else in the call who might have a comment uh, or a question. You're very welcome to raise your hand. Uh, we can unmute you or type in your question in the chat. Uh, Angela, do you know if we have any questions on the Facebook Live so we can address those uh, as no, well? So far, we have uh, two people watching, but no comments. OK, wonderful. So I, if there are no questions, I, I might also just add in a comment here while everyone feels a little bit more comfortable speaking out. Um, I, I do think it's wonderful what you're doing, Manuel, and I appreciate this, as you were uh, saying, how you know, the, the, the role of the artist has changed throughout time from you know, being anonymous to carrying um, a, a message of religion. And today for you feeling that, you need to go beyond the making of the art, but also kind of tap into the general kind of education and linking of you know, your collectors or uh, other people that appreciate your art and going beyond your, um, the walls of the, the, the classroom, the lecture room at UBC. I find that to be um, remarkable. And, and, I, and, I, and I do think that um, as people or uh, as artists, it's really important to go beyond that, to go beyond the, the making uh, and also, of course, uh, the discourse and, and exchanging with, with everyone who's looking at your work. So I think uh, what is going on here? Um, Herbert, would you like me to read out uh, your, your text? Okay, no problem. Or you, you're welcome to, to speak out uh, as well since we have you here. Anna, oh, okay, yeah. Please. Bueno, for me, uh, well, first of the Lord, thank you, Manuel, for for being here and sharing with us what it really means to be artist. Mm -hmm. That is that we need more than one hour to speak about that meaning. Yeah. For me, yeah. For me, being an artist is an attitude towards life to contribute to human enrichment, to use all as an instrument of social transformation. Is the true role of an artist to create some dialogues, some bridge where everybody can share in knowledge uh, and reach a better world. Uh, the Argentine writer Enrique Pinti was uh, defines very well uh, what an artist is. I have these verses that say, yeah, it's the verse that pulls about that. 
the general he speak about the arts to be artists is not related to time it's not related to politics you are just you are the artist and when you are really good you create a communication with any kind of generation that for me is being an artist thank you thank you Heather. Um, yeah. I would like to read those verses, they're very interesting. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Enrique Pinti says, crisis pass and wars pass, pass the sensationalist, sensationalist press, the prohibitions, the blacklists, the artists remain. The years go by, the governments pass, radicals and Peronists, summers go by, winters go by, the artists remain. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, you're welcome. And uh, Manuel, again, thank you so so much for being here. Uh, for everyone that uh, joined us today that will watch the recording of this um, on Facebook as well, um, I do think that this kind of talk really is um, an introduction and a, a snippet of what it's like to engage in a conversation with Manuel. Um, I do think that your, your students at UBC are very lucky to have you. We're lucky to have you today here as well. And I hope that this isn't the, um, the first or the last um, conversation that we can uh, have with you and also hoping to do this in person <laughs> very uh, sometime very soon. Um, Manuel, I don't know if you have any any remainder uh, comments to make or anyone else here would like to to take the floor. I think there's a question in the chat, Triana. Yeah, Lily ask a question and then try Triana. Mm -hmm. I can answer those. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so so Lily uh, says, could you please, could Manuel please share some thoughts about the connections between art and spirituality? Thank you, Lee. That's a great question. Yes. Um, you know, I can, uh, I don't think they can be separated. And, and, and I think that what uh, a misunderstanding of um, I think that it's a huge mis. Uh, this is my opinion, okay. Right. So I believe there is um, the the main problem that I see in, in academic uh, in, a, in teaching art in academic context is that very often that link is not shown. I can I don't think it can be separated. Uh, it would. We would have to define what spirituality is, right? But uh, just taking it for for the most general um, understanding of what that term means, I don't think they can be separated. Um, art is probably a, a, a good spiritual channel or something like that. And again, this is another conversation that would take hours, but more or less, more or less. And, <laughs> And then to Triana. Triana, I started being, a, I became an artist when I was 32. I started, it was when I was started making art. So I don't think it's ever too late. I don't really think it's ever too late. What age was that, Manuel? I didn't, or what year? I three, couldn't hear the number. Three. 33. So, 33. I, yeah. I was an engineer. I had been an engineer for a while, and and I had my engineer career when when I decided to become an artist. Um, but I have, I, have, I have students. I had a student who was seventy years old, right? The Korean student who was a mother, uh, powerful woman. I never forget her, her name, right? Ilso Kyung, Korean, right? Isu married a person, they started the business, they had a family, and when everything was done, right, all of it, she didn't have their own life, she decided to go to for, for her passion and become an artist at 70. And she was actually a very successful artist. She, she went into grants, and it was always a problem because when you are grants, the people expect to see young people, right? And you have this elder person, but she was so energetic and beautiful. Uh, so I lost track for her, but again, yeah, it's never too late. That's very inspiring. And I think that's a great message um, to kind of leave um, this, this talk. Mm -hmm. I, I do agree with you. It's, uh, it's important if we, we have maybe some time, the privilege to 
to follow our what's really our calling, right? And I agree with you, it's never too late or too early or too, you don't have to be perfect at it. Um, I think definitely going, going for it is important. And, and thank you for that, uh, Manuel. Uh, I thank you for everyone uh, being here. And um, again, um, let me just, uh, I think I did share the link with you. So um, everyone now has a link to a new tribe school. And Manuel, so you mentioned that there are now classes that are being offered, right? Um, there is a, a well, it's now finishing, Flavio, that, that uh, Ecuadorian shaman, he was teaching some dreaming classes, uh, but this is something we want to uh, keep doing on, uh, on, on a permanent basis. But I also, okay, this is a commercial. I, I would love to, I'm, I'm looking for people who want to gather around creating art and specifically and, and very briefly. I am very interested in, in the idea of interface. I'm sorry, it's gonna take a few minutes, right? So feel free to leave if you need to go. Don't I want? But I. So um, I'm very interested in the fact that all of communications, culture, intimacies, everything, every aspect of our lives takes place increasingly online, right? Uh, so those uh, so-called pages, right? in which we read news or, or, uh, or articles or read books uh, are so important. Is, are, they are the main uh, means of communication today. They are the, our main language. And it's a, it's a mixed language of images, sounds, texts, motion stills uh, in one place uh, that then connect to other places, similar places, right? So I'm very interested in that, what, what those um, pages are. And, and I don't know, page, I, it's, it's a terrible word for it because there are no pages, these are all metaphor to talk about spaces with information that are more richer and have more potential than what we know of, right? When we look at, when we say web page, we're already thinking in, in 19th century terms. So I'm very interested in exploring the, that environment as a creative space. And that's what I'm trying to do with this, with this experiment that with the, 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 the new types web page is also an attempt into thinking about what is a web page in itself, right? As you saw, you could browse around. There are different elements in one page. You can go to other places. So I'm very interested in, in that, in that space, in the interface as a poetic, space and what it, what kind of art can be created there. So if anybody's interested, that we, we can talk about that more. So that, that's it. Thank you, Manu. Thank you so much to, to everyone again. I look forward to uh, browsing um, your page. It looks like it's very interactive and there's lots to, lots to discover. So that's really exciting to, again, to see something that we talked about, about maybe like a year ago, come, come to shape. And yeah, I, that's I right. How, how it grows. Yeah, yeah. It, I, I remember you, yeah, when, when you were speaking about this project, I, I had this like idea in my mind, but you, you did it so, so well. Uh, the people that, you know, you put together, it's really, are, are, it's really impressive. Well, yeah. Manuel, again, thank you. Thank you so much for, for your time, for everyone being here. Um, I think you really left us with a really nice uh, message, right, to, you know, if we're going to follow our, our path, our vocation, how to go beyond the the making and just for ourselves right and and how that can be uh, how we can incorporate people around us and and create an impact so that's just wonderful that also to see how right when we met you were creating a community um, by letting people into your studio and talking and sharing and now um it's you have this other space uh online to, to do to do that um mm -hmm. Great, wonderful. So this video um, has been recorded, um, so anyone will be able to access it uh, on our YouTube uh, channel. Angela is going to share our channel with you. Um, it, it, it will as well be left uh, on Facebook. Uh, um, some of you might know that, you know, we do a very different type of programming. This is part of our visual arts programming, but we also um, have programming related to literature, 
Um, as well, as I mentioned in the beginning, our, our biggest goal is to have a physical space uh, where we can have these types of conversations in, in person, uh, where we can you know, watch um, um, contemporary dance or listen to poetry. So you being here today is really helping us. If you share it with your friends outside of Vancouver, um, that helps us as well. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram, you can follow us on Facebook, wherever you feel more comfortable. We are currently running our uh, annual funding campaign. So if you would like to keep on seeing events like this or um, better events, um, you are able to, to donate uh, any amount that you would like to. Uh, we're gonna share that link with you as well. That, that helps us uh, keep this uh, ship kind of running. Um, that helps us pay for our staff, um, pay for speaker fees, and then get the space that um, artists, uh, Latin American artists deserve in Canada. So thank you for, for today. That's that's all for, for now. I'm going to turn off my camera now, but we'll keep the event open just for a few minutes if you want to just uh, fetch the links that we shared throughout the beginning of the call. Again, Manuel, I can't thank you enough for, for this. And I look forward to, to seeing you in person soon. All right. I'm looking forward to that too. Yeah. Some part, we need some parts. <laughs>